This is going to be a quick video about the loudness metering in FabFilter Pro L2. I want to make a video just to show what I think is the best approach to using the LUFS metering in FabFilter Pro L2. So to begin with, I've got uh, the plugin inserted on my master strip in Aurea, and I've set the metering to loudness. That's the crucial thing. And I've set my target as being minus 14 LUFS. And so the next stage after that is to have a look at the levels going into the limiter. Now, if you're using Aurea, I strongly recommend that you use the subgroups. And the reason for this is pretty simple, as I'm going to explain. I've got a 24 track project here. And if I need to control the levels going into the limiter, I don't want to be fiddling with 24 separate faders. It's much simpler to do it with just four faders. So what I've got is uh, anything that's drums basically goes into the drums subgroup. All the music goes into the music subgroup. The vocals go into the vocal subgroup and the harmonies have their own subgroup. And just in terms of normal mixing, it makes it much easier to balance my mix because if you're mixing a track of vocals, you're constantly having to adjust the level of the vocals relative to the music or the music relative to the vocals and the drums, etc., etc. So having the subgroups makes it a lot easier to do this because there's simply fewer faders that you need to deal with. But why is this important for limiting? Well, I'm going to explain. Let me just uh, reset all these faders on the subgroups to zero and we'll open the limiter and let's see what happens when I press play. And so the first thing you can see is of course everything is just really really loud. We're not peaking at minus 14, we're peaking much much higher, we're peaking at sort of minus eight. So this is a really really loud master and it's not suitable for streaming because what happens if you submit a master that's this loud to a streaming platform, they will simply make the volume quieter, they'll turn the volume down. So what we need to do is to make sure that there is lower volume going into the limiter. And one of the drawbacks of Pro-L2 is there's no input gain. You can't reduce the input gain. So you do need to do it using the faders. So let me just quickly undo those changes so that all my faders are back to where they were. Okay, so with that done, I'm gonna press play again and I'm going to open the plugin one more time and we can see that uh, if I reset the metering, we've got much quieter levels coming into the meter now. And so this is something that we can work with because I can increase the gain here in order to achieve my desired target loudness. So let's look at the way the loudness meters work. There's several options you've got. There's momentary, which means that the meter reacts to every transient. There's short term, which sort of averages out over a longer period. And there's integrated. Now it's actually worth noting that you have all three meters available all the time, but you're essentially choosing which is the big meter in the middle. So integrated means that it's just going to take an average of all the time between a reset and now. So if you basically have it running for the whole track, it will give you the average for your whole track. So it makes it much easier to determine what the average for your entire track is going to be. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop the track. I'm going to go back to the beginning. I'm going to reset the meter and I'm just going to play the track all the way through. And I'm going to pause the video while I do this. So once the track's finished, I'll be able to see what the average loudness of the whole track was. And I'll also be able to see what the dynamic range of the entire track was by looking at this bar here. And so I've played my whole track through and you can see that the average loudness for the track is a minus 15.4, which means that I've still got a little bit of leeway. I can add a little bit more gain because anything that's a higher number than minus 14, or actually a lower number seeing as we're in minus numbers, is basically slightly too quiet. And anything that goes past minus 14, say minus 13, is a little bit too loud. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to raise the gain by 1.4. Now what you might find is as you lift your finger off the gain, it moves and that's one of the annoying things. But what you can do is simply put a second finger somewhere else on the screen and that will allow you to remove your finger from the gain amount without it shifting anymore. So with that done, I can rewind my track. And what you'll also notice is as the track's playing, 
there's hardly any limiting happening. I mean, in the very louder sections, some of the transients will be reduced a tiny bit, but overall, we're not gonna get very much limiting. And that's really good news because it means that the dynamic range of our track is gonna be more or less unaffected. We can have the ebb and flow, the quiet parts, the loud parts, and everything is gonna sound natural. The other thing is, of course, that there's gonna be no additional distortion added by the limiter, so that's also good news. So we've got all the life in our track. So just before I wrap up, I'm just gonna do a couple more things. I've got True Peak limiting enabled, and that's important because it means that as your digital signal is converted to analog, you're not gonna get some of the tops of the waves that might not have been part of the digital signal clipping when they're converted to analog. But another thing you should always do is just reduce the output just by a fraction. I mean, with this kind of track, you can see there's a little bit of limiting here very very minimal but um, if you give yourself a little bit of room say let's say 0 0.10 like that 0 0.11 that should give you enough of a safety margin that you don't need to worry about any potential clipping especially when there's so little limiting being done now i'm also going to add a little bit of oversampling two times should be enough because once again we're really doing very little in terms of limiting here, so there's not too much to worry about. And if I let that run all the way through, I'll probably find that at the end, we're very close to minus 14. If we're not exactly on minus 14, it's gonna be close enough that it doesn't really matter. So now that the track is played through one more time, I can see my final reading is minus 14.6, which means I can probably add another 0 0.5 dB of gain if I wish to. Just play it through once more and check it. But the idea is that I can get a really accurate average reading by using the integrated metering mode. It makes it really useful and it makes it really super simple to prepare your tracks for the correct loudness level for streaming. It's definitely the easiest way of doing this on iOS because the only other option you have on iOS is Clev Grand Grand Finale, but that doesn't have the integrated. It only has momentary, so you would have to basically try and work out what the average is yourself. Also, the meter in Grand Finale, it really isn't as easy to read as the one in Pro L2.